the decision of the British people on the 23rd of June, gives us a once in a generation chance to shape a new future for our nation, the chance to build a stronger, fairer country. That's the kind of change people voted for, not just to leave the European Union, but to change the way our country works and the people for whom it works forever. But just as government needs to change its approach, so business needs to do so too. For all, we all know that in recent years, the reputation of business as a whole has been bruised. Trust in business runs at just 35% amongst those in the lowest income brackets. The behavior of a limited few has damaged the reputation of the many. And fair or not, it is clear that something has to change. That's why we'll shortly publish our plans to reform corporate governance, including executive pay and accountability to shareholders, and proposals to ensure the, vo ensure the voice of employees is heard in the boardroom. And let me be clear about some important points. First, while it's important that the voices of workers and consumers should be represented, I can categorically tell you this is not about mandating works councils or the direct appointment of workers or trade union representatives on boards. Some companies may find that these models work best for them, but there are other routes that use existing board structures, complemented or supplemented by advisory councils or panels, to ensure all those with a stake in the company are properly represented. It will be a question of finding the model that works.